Hey everyone, this is Michael Park, and let me welcome you to this video tutorial on how to recreate the brand new opening uh, gun barrel sequence to the new James Bond movies. This is the style that's been utilized the last two movies uh, starring Daniel Craig at, in Quantum of Solace and the one before at Casino Royale. Here's a short little clip of what we're kind of going to be doing today. Alright, and here's a kind of a bigger still image. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and reset 3D Max here and we'll start from scratch so you can see exactly what we're doing. First thing I'm going to do is start out with a line tool and put in a new line. Turn on the 3D uh, uh, snap tool and I've created a new line. I'm going to go into the modifier and use the vertex sub object mode. I'm going to push this from 200 out to 2 I'm going to make a pretty long gun barrel here, and that's the length we're going to have. Um, actually, instead of 2,000, I'm actually going to push it out to only 1,900 or so, and that's because we're going to use this as uh, a length to animate the camera on, and I don't want it to go all the way to the end of the gun barrel, so that's what we're going to use. We'll call this camera path. All right. Uh, next thing, let's go ahead and start working on the barrel itself. So go back to your standard primitives, select a tube, and in the front viewport, drag and make a tube, and we'll come down here and manually enter some settings. We're going to have the outside radius of 52, the inside radius of 50, the height of negative 2,000. Height segments, we're going to move to 1. Uh, we're going to increase those later on and 28 on the sides which is going to be the amount of grooves we're going to have in our barrel. Uh, next thing we need to do is go ahead and right click on the tube and convert it to an editable poly. Let's go ahead and rename this barrel and let's go to the edge sub object mode. We can turn off our 3D uh, snap for now and I'm going to select one of these edges and hit loop and then ring select all of those. What I'm going to do is chamfer these uh, 0.75 so that we're actually getting uh, two lines instead of one offset and as you can see this is going to start giving us our grooves hit OK. Uh, go to your uh, polygon sub object mode and I want to select all the polygons because I'm going to change their ID to one. We're going to go ahead and set their ID to one and I'm going to do that because later on, or actually right now, we're going to go ahead and grab the interior polygons of, uh, of this barrel and extrude those. So change your front view to perspective to make it easier to see. And then go smooth in highlights and edged faces. And you can zoom in just a hair. Maybe you can maximize it. And go to your selection tool, don't use the move tool or you might accidentally move some of these around a little bit and start selecting uh, all of these by clicking on them while holding down control which will allow you to go ahead and select all of these interior polygons. Um, one thing you might want to do is to hit the ignore back facing. Um, sometimes you can accidentally get one of the other polygons. In this case it doesn't really matter because we're not going to be looking at the outside but in other projects you might want to do that. And then go ahead and use the uh, go back to the front viewport here and use the extrude command and we're going to extrude this uh, about 0.8 or so and hit OK. And If we zoom in here you can see what, what we've done. Now we still have all those polygons on the inside selected and if you look at this you can see that these extruded parallel to this uh, to their uh, base planes uh, but in doing so they actually kind of come in together and I want those to be more parallel with each other and the way to fix that is to grab our scale tool and scale in the X and Y axis only don't use the center here to scale in all three you can scale in this and we'll just move it down to where those look parallel which is about right there and we can go ahead and uh, come down while those are still selected those particular polygons and set their ID to 2 uh, and then we can get out of the sub object mode okay 
Uh, and since we're creating things, let's go ahead and create a free camera. And I want a 24 millimeter. And we'll stick it right here. And we go ahead and come into the controller, motion control. Go to position and turn this off here. Assign a path constraint. Okay. And what we want to do is select that line we created, the camera path. So we'll come down here to the add path. Make sure we've got the line camera path selected. And you can see it's gone ahead and added two animation keyframes. And it, it's going the wrong way. It's OK. The easy way to do that is just swap these keys around, put the front back at the back, and the back somewhere in the middle here. And then the camera will go ahead and be going the right way. As you can see, we're at the very end, and then we rush backwards. Um, the camera is a little too close, but before we kind of adjust the camera position, we need to adjust for the final output uh, aspect ratio. So I'm going to go here and select, for me it's going to be 16 by 9. You select whatever it is that's good for you or works for you. I'll be using the HDTV preset, and I'll go you know, 490 by 270 for now. And come down here, and we're going to right click and change or add on the show safe frame. And you can see it's it's way too close here. So there's a couple things we can do. We can either adjust the percentage along the path that we are, or I can actually come in here to the actual line, which I think is the better method. We'll get out of this sub-object mode. Select the camera path line. Go to the Modify panel. Grab just this vertex, and we will dial this back until we see uh, the right ratio of screen or, or uh, the background to the gun barrel. And I think about a starting point, about 1750 is a good round number to settle on. And we'll get out of the sub-object mode. Uh, let's go ahead and create some materials here. Um, well, before we do that, let's go ahead and create the, the, the background plane so we can get all of our creation out of the way. Create a new plane, turn the 3D snap on again, and I'm going to be creating a 16 by 9 aspect ratio plane because that's what my footage is. Create yours however uh, big you need it to be. My length is going to be about 135 by 240. And now I'm going to move this back to 2020 in the Y. So it's all the way back at the end of the gun barrel with a little bit of room here. And that looks good. And the last thing we need to create is a new light. So we'll create an Omni light. We still have the 3D snap toggled. Just pop it in there. And once again, we're going to have to move this to the end of the barrel. So go minus 2,000. Ah, went the complete wrong way. I guess we need to place it at 2,000. Ah, there we go. All right, so we got the Omni light set. It's late, and sometimes I feel like I'm losing my mind. No harm, no foul, right? All right. We need to adjust this Omni light. Turn on ray trace shadows. Multiplier of one. Turn on an inverse decay. Turn on the use and show attenuation. And the attenuation settings we're going to be using are the end is going to be 52 or the diameter of the gun barrel. We're going to start at 52 and move to about a quarter of the way down, which for us is about 500. That looks good. Uh, we're going to turn on diffuse only, not the specular. And that looks good. All right, now let's go adjust some of these materials. Um, open your material editor. The first thing I'm going to do is put in the background material. So I'm going to open up my bitmap and put in my bond background. I'm going to go up here, change the self illumination to 100%, and I'm going to select my plane, 
push it over and hit show in viewport and there we go um, throw a quick little preview out there and see what it looks like ah good um, next thing we need to do is create the barrel material itself so we're going to use a multi sub object material and we're going to set the number down to two because that's the only uh, the amount we have and the first one's going to be just black and the second one's going to be a reflect and for the black material we'll just go black flat and the diffuse we're going to go jet black with no specular level or highlights or anything of that sort and the second one we're going to leave at 150, 150, 150 for the color no specular uh, no illumination but for the maps we're going to add a small bump map uh, we'll go one and we'll use a noise map and the only okay the only change we're going to make is the size we're going to go down to two and we'll go back up and for the, the reflection we're going to add in a ray trace material and we'll go reflection and make sure enable self reflect refract is on and go to the basic material extensions and the bump mag effect we'll go to point one okay and that looks good everything else looks good and so we are going to select the tube here and apply that material and we'll do a quick preview looks good okay um, the only thing that we need to do is dial down that reflection a little bit and we'll maybe go down to about 40 percent let's look at that alright looks good okay final step here is to add the twist so we will go to the edge sub object mode and we're going to select all of the lengthwise edges and we're going to hit uh, connect and I'm going to connect about 80 which will break up this long one segment into 80 smaller segments as you can see I added all those segments and if we come and turn the edge faces on on here you can see how many more we have um, let's do a quick preview, ah looks good and let's go ahead and add a twist to the barrel we'll go twist and the angle we're going to use, it's completely up to you what you want to use um, mine's going to look probably really good at minus 540 and we'll do a quick rendering ah yep that's what we're looking for and kind of the last thing I'm going to do is to add a mesh smooth and if I render it right now with the mesh smooth it's applied kind of to everything and it's not going to look right I'll show you what it looks like here it's going to bump everything out and just it looks all nasty um, but since we have separate smoothing groups we can smooth the result by just by smoothing group here there we go and that looks really good and if we uh, go in real close here I'll, I'll render this out bigger uh, let's go 1280 by 720 that looks good you can see on the on the ends here it kinda has rounded that a little bit and I like that definition I think it looks pretty cool um, you obviously don't need that step it looks just fine without the smoothing but I think that gives us a much more refined looking edge um, so that's basically it if you go ahead and render this out from a long way away I don't need it quite that large we'll bump it back down maybe yeah. and if we render it out from a little further back you can be able to see how our light basically keeps this down here bright um, but it starts reflecting and refracting um, and it looks very similar to the effect in the new Bond film so hey I hope this has uh, been informative and you have picked up a few tips 
thank you for your time and your attention and wish you the best of luck in your video projects and God bless.